Hey guys, it's Ben from Snowboard Gamer. Welcome to episode 23 of This Week in Board Games, where I do quick reviews of all the games I played this week, go over any interesting board game news, and show any new purchases. And this here is the stack of games I got for Christmas for my family, and I'm really excited to share with you guys what I got. But let's start off with the games I played. I'm going to go heavier to lighter this time. So I'm going to start with Scythe. Scythe is a game for one to five players, ages 14 and up, and plays in 90 to 115 minutes. This is a 1920s post-World War I alternate history themed game in Europe. We've got all these different factions, which are essentially countries, and they're fighting over control of the factory, which is producing these giant mechs here. One of my favorite things about this game is the artwork. It's just unbelievable. It's really an engine building game where you're putting your workers out into the fields, you're gathering resources, using those to build buildings, deploy mechs, hire mercenaries. A Little bit of fighting, a little bit of area control, but it's really more of an economic engine building game and one of my favorites in my top five for sure. I wanted to play it with the Wind Gambit, the brand new expansion that came out, but we were playing with new players this week, so we opted to just play with the base while they're getting familiar with the game. So hopefully we can get the wind gamut out over the next week. It looks really cool. Travis and I started a campaign of Gloomhaven. This is a legacy game, which means it continues game to game. There's a story. You are traveling together through the world of Gloomhaven. You're meeting people, you're fighting creatures, you have your character, you level them up, you fight monsters, you buy items. Gloomhaven is for one to four players, 30 minutes per player, and ages 14 and up. I'm excited to play some more of this. I really had a good time on our first play of Gloomhaven. Secret Hitler is our go-to game for groups with large numbers of people. Secret Hitler is a pre-World War II themed game with a liberal government in Germany trying to keep it together and prevent the lying fascists from taking over and installing Hitler as their leader. Secret Hitler is for five to 10 players, ages 17 and up, but we play it with the teenagers, it's fine, and plays in 45 minutes. He draws me and makes him a liberal, or she's a fascist because they're at odds. When you're a fascist, then you're a liberal. You two are on sides. So you're the, then you're a liberal because you draws me when you didn't draws me because I played a liberal and I got a fascist and a liberal, which makes Josh a fascist. <laughs> <laughs> I just got some new storage for the game. Check it out. This is the limited edition box that I got about a month or so ago. And inside, I got some storage so the boards fit in there nicely. I ditched the stock box that it came with. President and Chancellor. All of the cards fit in one of these bins I got at the container store for three bucks. And they're all sleeved. Policy tiles all fit in this one along with the vote tracker. And this is another three bucks. So for six bucks, I added some great storage in here. It works like a charm. And now for our weekly board game room update. We finished installing all of the cabinets on the upper side over here. We got the mini fridge put in the corner. We have all the games now organized and in the cabinets. We still need to put hardware on the cabinets. And we're going to put a countertop back here and above the mini fridge. So there's still some more work to do, but we're getting there. I'll continue to give weekly updates as we make progress on the room. Lately, we've been into these dice rolling and dice placement games, and these are our two favorite right now. Las Vegas and Cosmic Run. These are on the lighter side, but they're great if you have 20, 30 minutes. Las Vegas is a simple game where every person gets eight dice, and you roll the dice, and you choose all of one number and put them on that casino for that number, and you keep going around, and if you have more than other people, you get paid out, and you want to avoid ties because then nobody gets anything. Cosmic Run is similar, but it's got a little more depth to it. Instead of putting your dice on casinos, you've got five planets that you're trying to discover. You're trying to move your little spaceship up to the top of the planet before everyone else, and once the planet's discovered, you score wherever you are on the planet, so you don't want to be stuck at the bottom where you're negative. In addition to the planets, you've got these cards that you can buy. You've got a card in front of you where if you have wasted dice, you don't actually waste them. You can move your little tracker up on that card and gives you additional powers. You can plus one or minus one a die, so you can modify it to try and get what you need. Cosmic Run is one to four players. Las Vegas is two to five players, and they both play in about 20 to 30 minutes and are for ages eight and up. I highly recommend both of these if you're looking for a light dice rolling and dice placement game that's got a lot more strategy in it than Yahtzee. Now, for my purchases. These aren't really my purchases, these are my Christmas gifts. The first one is from my sister-in-law who sent us Escape Room the game. 
This one has four thrilling escape rooms, Prison Break, Nuclear Countdown, Virus, and Temple of the Aztec. That sounds fun. This just should be a good family activity to do one night. Or maybe multiple nights since it comes with four of them. Each one plays in about 60 minutes, so that's four hours of playing time. Nice. The next one is Mysterium Hidden Signs. One of Travis's friends named Alex gave this to our family. I'm really excited. Thank you, Alex. Alex is over here a lot, likes to play board games with us. He's been in quite a few of my videos. The next one I got is from my wife, Allison. And she got me Pandemic Iberia. This is a limited collector's edition. Once they run out of these, they're not printing anymore. From everything I've heard of all the different themed pandemic games, this one is one of the best. It's very hard and very challenging, but it's supposed to be really good. So I'm interested to see how this compares to the regular pandemic. Allison went through my wish list and read all the reviews, also read descriptions about all the games, and picked the one that she thought sounded the most interesting and that was Plank, a deck building adventure. I have not played this game. I've heard good things about it. One of Allison's favorite games is Dominion, which is also a deck building game. This is a deck building adventure, which means you're, you're buying cards and slowly building your personal deck up, but there's also a board aspect to it. And it's called Clank because you're trying to sneak through the dungeon to steal treasure. One misstep and you make some noise, it makes a clank noise and it startles the dragon and the dragon comes after you. That's really all I know about it from reading the description. Sounds like a really fun game. The last one I got is from Travis. Travis went through my wish list and wanted to find a game that was not on my wish list to surprise me. And he totally surprised me. The game he got me is Champions of Midgard. This game is similar to Lords of Waterdeep. It's a worker placement game, but there's also combat in it where you take your hero and you go out and you fight monsters. That's really all I know about it. It says 34 custom dice on the back. It's got a board that looks kind of similar to Lords of Waterdeep. And then Kinsey got me the Valhalla expansion for it. I first saw this game a month ago at the Extra Life Gaming event in Fort Collins. Kevin from Game Toppers was playing it at the table next to us. We have bring our, our food and our ale onto the boat. We are going to fight monsters across the sea for glory, for Valhalla! <laughs> Nice. <laughs> they went ahead and threw in the second expansion as well. I hope I like this game because we're starting off with both expansions. I've heard it's really fun and I'm super excited to play it. One more thing that I got that I'm really excited about. It's not really board game related. It's more snowboard related. This is the Karma Grip. It is a gimbal on a stick for a GoPro. So when you're filming, the stick moves around, but the GoPro stays put. I'm super excited to go try this out on the mountain and try and get some really good footage of us snowboarding. We'll be hitting the mountains, hopefully this weekend again, and we can give this new Karma Grip a shot with our GoPro. And now for my favorite present of Christmas. This is not anything that you can buy. This is something that my daughter Kinsey made for me. This is awesome. Check it out. She painted this on canvas. And these guys are so cute. There's two snowboarders. There's a little skier here. They're going up the ski lift. And there's the shape of goggles around here. And it's snowing. I love this so much. It's absolutely gonna be hanging on the wall in our board game room once we start decorating it. So thank you, Kinsey. This is awesome. We haven't had a chance to play any of these games yet. We just had Christmas. But we did get a chance to put a puzzle together. We like to do that as a family. Travis and I went to Breckenridge, Colorado on Christmas Eve. I mentioned last week I was working on a collaborative project with Chris and Wendy from Meeple Overboard. They released it on Christmas Day. Go check out their YouTube channel. At the end of this video will be a little segment of my son and I going to Breckenridge along with this music that I worked on together with Chris and Wendy from Meeple Overboard. Thanks for watching everyone. If you celebrate Christmas, I hope you had a great Christmas. And for everyone out there, Happy New Year. See you next time.
talent.